Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. This is one day before the Bitcoin conference in Nashville, Tennessee, and we'll see how it goes. But I got to tell you, the market today is not looking too strong. We're going to take a look at what's going on with our market, what's going on with the traditional market, which is actually getting kicked in the teeth right now as we speak. We're going to talk about Kamal Harris, Vice President of the United States, uh, not attending uh, Bitcoin Nashville. Shocker. And uh, we'll also take a look at the game Alluvium as I interview Kieran Warwick, who is one of the co-founders, as they launch on Epic and Airdrop, staking rewards and everything in between. So let's just jump into it, shall we? So the first things first, I mean, I don't have to tell you this, but market's not looking too hot today in crypto. But don't worry, because in traditional markets, it's looking even worse. I have to tell you, if you take a look here at Bitcoin today in the last 24 hours, it's actually quite resilient. It's only down 0.9%. Not too bad. Now, Ethereum is really the one taking the beating. And we're going to take a look at the inflows and the outflows uh, for this recent Ethereum ETF. And I got to tell you, the second day is far worse than the first one. Uh, and besides that, of course, the usual suspects, everything else is down except for Solana and XRP. Solana's up 2.6, 13% for the week. So congratulations, Solana holders. You guys are the ones that have done the best over this seven days. So congrats to you. And XRP, last uh, 24 hours, you're looking pretty good, but not for the week. So if anybody needs a win, it's the XRP army. I'm rooting for you guys. Hopefully it goes well. And then, of course, down the line, we see a lot of red. A lot of red. Is there any big winners? Wow. Dog with hat, 16% for the week. Congratulations on meme coin holders. Good luck with that. And that's pretty much it. So, I mean, we can keep going, but it's mostly a red day. That's what's happening. So what the heck is going on with this ETF? Well, we just got new data in over here. This is from farside.co. And it looks like the ETF flow on the second day is massively in the red, negative $247 million. So if we take it, because we were talking about this yesterday, 23rd of July, and we were talking about just how things were going, not too bad. I mean, we had uh, Grayscale, they had the outflows of almost 500 million at 484, ETH, ETH, and ETH, uh, they were the winners. And a little bit of these other ones from 21 shares, Van Eck, Invesco, Franklin, BlackRock was the big winner. And they pretty much told their investors, like, this is going to be big. But today, you may notice one thing. Nobody from BlackRock bought. Nobody from Fidelity or Bitwise. Now, this data may be uploaded or may be um, appreciated later. But right now, this is what we have. And so far, and I believe the market has closed. Let me refresh this just to make sure. Right now it is, uh, yeah, it's almost 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's when the markets, uh, markets has been closed for quite some time. And uh, besides Van Eck, Bitwise, and Franklin at a whopping 3.9 million. You're looking at Grayscale that has come in at negative. So the total of all inflows and all outflows, Grayscale has negative 811. The biggest winners, barely BlackRock, Kind of bitwise, we're down negative 121. I know some people were, were saying to me, but Rob, you don't understand because what's going to happen is everybody's going to get out of Ethereum and Grace uh, of their of their Grayscale holdings because of the rates that they have to pay. And they're going to just go and zip right over to BlackRock, Bailey, Bitwise, or whatever else. And I was like, that makes sense, you know, because maybe they're just holding too long. They're like, I want to get out, maybe take some profits but the fees are too much. I'm going to go someplace where the fees are nominal. Today is not that case. Today, you can see very clearly that uh, it is not looking good. So, so that's what we have uh, as far as what's going on with Ethereum. And it's not surprising. It's a buy the rumor, sell the news. And that's just pretty much how it goes. So does that mean that it's always going to be awful? No, it's just that's the way it is right now. Now, you can look at this in two different ways. You can say, like, this is going to be awful and they're going to keep dumping. Probably. Or you can say to yourself, if you really believe in Ethereum and Layer 2 solutions, maybe you say to yourself, you know what? This is a great opportunity for me to actually get in 
and I'm going to buy into weakness as everybody starts selling off. And that's up to you. Me personally, I've had my bags packed for quite some time in 2022 and 2023. That's the whole purpose of the, of the uh, bear market. But we'll see where it takes us. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. But there is something to note because it's not just about us. It's about the entire market. What's going on in the macro environment? What's going on in traditional equities? What's going on in precious metals and all the things in between? Before going live, I saw this from Ben. Stock market lost 1.1 trillion in value today, which is equivalent to the entire cryptocurrency asset class, excluding Bitcoin. And I thought to myself, that's quite a bit of money. Let's see how bad it is. So with the S&P 500, just looking at S&P, you can see that actually in one day, it's down 2.3%. Now, for us, 2.3% is, it's actually like two or three hours. We're not really, really concerned. But over five days, this is where things get a little hairy for, for the TradFi folks. And I get it, negative 3% is awful. Over a month, you're actually down 0.3%. But if you look at it six months and one year, I mean, you're up bigly. What do you have for five years? Sweet Mary Joseph, you're up 80% over five years. Congratulations, TradFi. Of course, most people will focus on this or this or this. That's just how it goes. So, you know what's going on? Well, earnings is what's going on. This is from CNBC. Stock futures rise after S&P 500. NASDAQ posts the worst day since 2022. So I want to remind you about this. You know, everybody's talking about, okay, well, if this happens over here, if this happens, then this happens. You have to appreciate the resiliency of what we're seeing with Bitcoin for today. Now, I'm not saying that this can't really drop hard tomorrow because let's be honest, this is a speculative asset. This is risky for some of us, but the ones that are in the know, we don't feel it's that risky. It's just the future, but there's a, that's a debate for a whole other video. But look at Bitcoin today, 24 hours, only down 0.8%. Solana up 2.8%. So on, Ethereum, of course, down. But again, resiliency. I like to see that. That means there's good things on the horizon, hopefully. But this is why. And it states, investors have been viewing the recent declines as a sign of an overdue correction in an overbought market. Well, that's the truth, which is now seeing a rotation away from mega cap tech into small cap stocks, which I have to tell you is the same thing that we usually do here in crypto, right? We go into the large cappers, the Bitcoins, the Ethereums, the Solanas, and then when those start to run, then what do people do? They take their profits and they go into low cappers. They go into low caps and they start to degen into that, make some money. Then they go into like the total degeneracy out of the 100, get into like the startups or the, the ICOs that are, that are out there in the world and try to make money that way. And they rotate right back into the large caps. So it's good to see that TradFi does the same thing that we do. And lastly, although some major tech names missed expectations this week, an overall positive earnings season so far is propping up investor enthusiasm. So good thing that the uh, earnings came out and they were somewhat positive. However, take note that that's not it. More than a quarter of companies in S&P 500 have reported their second quarter earnings, which means there's more people to report. Thursday, we'll see an additional slew of financial results from American Airlines, Northrop, Honeywell, Hasbro. And we're also going to see jobless claims data and preliminary second quarter G GDP growth. So um, hold on because it might get a little bumpy and we'll see how it goes. Now, remember, it doesn't matter. You have your sphere of control. Can you control any of this? Absolutely not. You can't. But one thing that you can control is say, okay, if tomorrow, if everything breaks awful, I got two choices. I can start to buy, which I'm not telling you to buy. But the second thing is I do nothing. I would not encourage you to sell into weakness. I think that's a very big mistake that a lot of people make, especially when they're new, but you do what you have to do. So remember, figure out what you can control and harp on that. There are some things you can't control and that's just the way it is. So anyhow, let me think about that in the comments section. And then uh, lastly, before we get to Alluvium, Kamala Harris, vice president. I actually have nothing against Kamala Harris. I mean, besides the whole border and how she really just you know, totally obliterated that job. But yeah, you know, this isn't a political channel. I'm just saying. I know people always make fun of me for saying it's not a political channel. And I say something political, but it is what it is. So 
Kamala Harris not too long ago, and I, I, I couldn't wrap my head around this. I mean, I kind of figured it out, but I remember her saying and said here, Bitcoin is money for criminals. That's what she said, which is what a lot of uh, people in the Biden administration actually said. So it was hard to wrap my head around the fact that she was coming to the Bitcoin conference starting tomorrow. And I thought it was great. I was like, wow, that's someone who's stepping up. Now you can look at it one way of she's pandering for votes. Or you look at another way going, well, she's going to embrace the future, which will help with economic growth in the United States because we need that. So I was very happy. I was like, wow, I got RFK Jr. Love to meet him. Trump probably won't meet him, but we'll see what he says. And Kamala Harris in the same place. That is like the great place to be <laughs> if you're in America. Fantastic. And of course, have a lot of other people that are there. Unfortunately, she dropped out. And uh, I think everybody knows this by now. So yesterday I said, hey, if the Biden administration, which Kamala Harris is under, if she does something or they do something positive, I will report it because I've been very positive on RFK Jr. and Donald Trump. So to keep things fair and balanced, I said, well, I'll make sure that I talk about the positives of what's going on. And I'm, I'm I thought it was great. She's going to come out. She's going to go into lines then. She's going to take some questions. She's going to get shelled and, and people are going to you know talk negatively about her, but she's going to show up and that is a leadership quality. And that's what people do. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. This is from uh, David Bailey. He's the founder of uh, Bitcoin Magazine. He says, and he verifies it. He was the one that actually talked and said that she might come because we are in talks with her organization or with her handlers. And he says, yeah, Kamala Harris will not be speaking. No surprise. What can she say to us when she's actively imprisoning developers, forcing our industry overseas, attacking proof of work? It would have been a disaster for her. I have to agree. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. It would have been pretty bad. But again, I would have given her props for showing up and getting shelled by everybody and asking some very hard questions and maybe broadening her horizon as to why we are so pro Bitcoin and crypto. It would have been a learning experience, but she's going to pass on that because let's be honest, people in her party, Elizabeth Warren, despise crypto. Not everybody, but a lot of people. And for her to go there and talk to us would have sent a negative message to her party, I believe. Not to, again, not to everybody, but if you just take a look at the people that are anti-crypto and, and who are creating an anti-crypto army, Elizabeth Warren, then you know what I'm talking about. This would not sit well with them, especially as they're trying to gain re-election. And I hope John Deaton beats Elizabeth Warren, but another story. So in all honesty, she probably shouldn't have shown up. Wish she would have, but that's where we're at. And Tyler Winklevoss says it pretty well. He says, look, Biden-Harris administration wages an all-out war on the crypto industry for four years, Operation Choke Point 1 and 2.0. Despite all this, Kamala still invited to the Bitcoin conference in Nashville. And I got to tell you, that was, it was pretty good. You know, we gave the olive branch, hey, we know we've had our differences. Come with us. We'll show you what we're all about. And given a chance to speak to our industry and reset the relationship. What does she do? She declines. She can't even take the first step and show us to start mending fences. Our industry won't forget this. We will show no mercy in November. Now, some people will say, well, Rob, I'm don't care about that. I'm not a single issue voter. That's fine. This is not voting advice. <laughs> you do whatever you want to do. I'm just telling you, a vote for that administration, I'm pretty sure is a vote against crypto, but there are bigger issues there. And that is what you have to figure out for yourself. Anyhow, let me think about that in the comment section. And lastly, Alluvium. Uh, Alluvium, the Warwick brothers and different people that I've had on the show over the last two, two and a half years or so, uh, it's finally coming to fruition. Now, they've gone through a lot of beta testing. The game is actually out. You can, did you know you can get this on the Epic Play Store, which is pretty great, right? So you can get on the Epic Store and uh, everything gets reset. They're going to do the launch tomorrow. And this is like one of the, I would, depending on how you classify this, a AAA rated game. That looks fantastic and uh, is true Web3 sticking to the ethos of decentralization. I love to see this. So we had talked about this previously. We talked about the airdrop. And also there was a uh, video that me and Kieran, uh, co-founder of Alluvium, where we talked about how to take your Alluvium and stake it for different rewards. And what I did was uh, Kieran came on today 
and we had a quick discussion and it was about five or six minutes and my audio was so bad that I just cut myself off, out completely. So now this is a two minute interview, essentially what I asked Kieran. Kieran, what the heck's going on with Alluvium? How do we play the game? What's going on with the staking? And pretty much what's next. So I condensed the 10 minute video into like two minutes. So just watch this and uh, it'll make a lot of sense. Uh, all of our games are hosted on Epic. It's a really easy, just go to the Epic store and uh, you can download all three games. Uh, Alluvium Zero is its own title in there. And then uh, Alluvium, the, the game will also hold uh, Arena and Overworld. So uh, download them and uh, get in there, try it out. It's going to be really, really interesting uh, in terms of Overworld where a lot of people, it's kind of been like those gates have been shut for so long and we've got thousands and thousands of people that as soon as that those gates open, they're going to run into the Overworld and try and capture things as soon as possible, start selling them on the marketplace. And uh, the exciting thing for investors is uh, finally our revenue distribution token model that we developed you know, four years ago will come into effect. So every bit of revenue that we generate will uh, be used to buy back the ILV token. And then we'll distribute that to people who are staked in the protocol, which you know I know investors have been waiting for this for a long, long time. So it's exciting times for the gamers and the investors all together. Yeah. I think that's I think that's enough. It's, I mean, the, the airdrop is probably another thing to, to touch on. We've got a, a $15 million airdrop for uh, for uh, the first six months. <laughs> so basically just going in, downloading and playing the game as you tick off uh, different missions, you'll earn points and those points will uh, can can be converted into ILV. So, you know, we've while we've really, really stressed to uh, make a, a fun game to start off with. Yeah, it's a, the cherry on top is these uh, these bonus ILV rewards that you'll get for just playing a, a game. Great. So yeah, sorry, I had to cut myself completely out. So that's what's going on with that one. My audio was just so bad. I, I couldn't, I, I just couldn't uh, let you hear it. So uh, that's what Kieran want to say. And I think that's the most important message. Maybe I should just do all my interviews like that. Just cut myself out. Just let the real people talk. Uh, Kieran gave some great information. So again, uh, the, the, what we talked about with this one, let me add this in. When, he, when we're talking about the airdrops and staking all those things, we did a video and it was called Play This Web 3 Game Before April 30th. It doesn't really matter now. You're actually in, in that point. I linked this in the description. You can figure all that out. Also, uh, I linked in the uh, airdrop, the details, and of course, the Alluvium website. So you can check that out. And uh, I wish these guys all the best. I mean, they worked their tail off for years and years. It's been like three or four years. And now they're actually coming into their own. And uh, I knew, I felt like gaming could, could do well. And now I see it and I'm happy for them. That's it for today. So look. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I'm going to talk about is time sensitive.